Dear chess friends, welcome to us out of chess channel and welcome to another beautiful game that I hope will break your depressed Monday atmosphere. Welcome to a spectacular gameplay by Stalfish 16 against another top engine Minic in an epic Evans Gambit of the Italian game. And uh, the Evans Gambit I think is getting back in shape. Uh, recently we have covered a couple of games in the Evans game and that's why I decided to start the week today with a crazy crazy again before moving the early stage of the game when it comes to AI chess these games are really crazy really mortal and in this game Stockfish pull off one of the most incredible tactics that I've seen in my life uh, a really really epic epic sequence so put your seatbelts on and enjoy again in a crazy gameplay by the strongest chess engine in the world by Stockfish 16 so with the white feast as the fish open with the move e4 e E5 by Minic knight to three knight to c6 bishop to c4 we have now the italian game bishop to c5 the gioco piano and now comes the beautiful evans gambit move with the move b4 uh, bishop takes c3 gets an extra tempo against the bishop bishop stays of course on this diagonal uh now stallfish plays the beautiful d4 and after e takes d4 now finally king side casting and that's the beauty about the evans gambit you have already a beautiful piece activity the bishop is out the knight is uh, already very well placed the bishop can come into the game bishop to a3 in, in some lines is good in some ideas you're trying of course to get your pawn back here in the center and then you have a powerful central control so it's i think really really um sharp sharp opening playable I, I would say in any level of chess because although in the Evans gambit uh, Stockfish gives up now the pawn uh, still the evaluation is about 0.0, .0 so with a slight edge maybe here for black uh, but as I said if you make a tiny little inaccuracy in the early stage of the game then probably you will get destroyed by white so it's still I think a playable opening for sure so after move kingside casting now we have d3 which is now the so called frame defense uh, here by Minix Stockfish continues of course with queen to b3 this pawn is weak anyway we don't want to go for it uh this wouldn't be of course in the style of the evans gamut in the style of the evans gamut you activate your pieces place them on the most active scores uh try to put more pressure you always pressure your opponent you always force him to react not uh, to act so it's i think really, really a beautiful move also now the move queen to b3 here by the fish queen to f6 uh here mini connects now the queen to the pawn on f7 and now e5 again in sort of a uh evans gambit way breaking and entering now in the center of the board if you take of course this is not working because of the sequence uh you get this stuff uh you're getting destroyed around the square e5 you're trying to do something like this also uh queen to b5 for instance in one line is possible so game over for black for sure so e5 is of course not an option to take here for black so that's why queen to f5 uh, theoretical novelty by uh minic in chess history queen to g6 uh, was played there is a beautiful game between nigel short against uh, gary kasparov in which gary kasparov actually won the game uh with the black pieces in the ex in this particular position but okay queen to f5 pretty solid also move here by uh minic we have rook to d1 stoppage goes now for the d pawn uh but he doesn't want to of course to play with the bishop again now we want to uh, simply get uh, the pawn in a different way with rook to d3 activating again again also trying bishop to a3 prevent maybe black from casting so very very spicy line again for both sides knight from g to e7 bishop to d3 queen to e6 bishop to a3 we have h6 and now bishop to c4 hitting the queen queen drops back stockfish attacks the queen and after rook to e1 here minic tried queen takes b3 and after a takes b3 i would say here a slightly better position for white because in the previous line white has this um two isolated pawns which are of course a structural weakness in the later stage of the game uh but then after queen to b3 you're connecting your pawns again now you have uh, possibilities to attack the a file you have also possibilities to be flexible with this pawns this pawn is very advanced has of course uh here some uh problems for for black to play something like d6 or f6 to somehow crack the position here around the square e5 so i would say as i said slightly better position for white and although the queens are off the board believe me this will be such a such an epic game stoffer will show here really again great attacking skills although um it seems so in the beginning that could this could be a boring big game because uh the queens have been traded off but now look at how stoffer is playing again immortal immortal chess after eight 
takes b3 a6 uh, here by Minic trying of course to activate the bishop on this diagonal and also have a breathing square for the uh, for the bishop when it gets maybe in danger to play bishop to a7 so stockfish continues with bishop to e4 uh, if you castle now castling seems tempting but it's not working because of bishop to e7 then after knight takes e7 you lose the bishop so uh, the knight on c6 is a little bit overloaded to both of these pieces so that's why for bishop to e4 bishop to b6 we have now knight from b to d2 and now bishop to a7 knight to c4 again you cannot castle because of this line bishop to c6 uh, then you play something like knight to c6 and then you lose the exchange here i would say white is completely winning the game so that's why for knight to c4 king to d8 has to be played now uh, by minik and stockfish plays now the beautiful rook from a to d1 and when you watch now this position I couldn't even find any better square now for white pieces on the board. Basically, white has played, uh, placed the pieces on the most active squares, uh, on the most aggressive squares. And whenever Stockfish builds such an attacking formation, usually it's really a one-way ticket. Usually uh, its opponent gets demolished. Look at this, how Stockfish is having now really, really great attacking chances. Black's pieces are a little bit cramped. Uh, Bishop is not out, Knight's are not supposed to play in such a way where are, they are covering the same squares. Uh, this knight cannot also move. There are some maybe positional threat like bishop to g6. d6 is not an option because you're getting destroyed on the d file. Even if you attack uh, here with b5, then you're weakening further the structure. So it's so hard now to find any good move here for black. Although the evaluation is slightly better um, um, for, for white. From a human's perspective, I would always say this is a better, better game for white because because especially with the peace activity but now you have to of course find the best tactical solutions here rook to b8 play by minic trying of course to do something here h4 by the fish we have rook to f8 covering the f7 weakness we have now rook to d2 stockfish is now building of course a rook battery on the d file rook to g8 h5 neutralizing here the position paralyzing any further progress of blacks on this side of the board and now f move g6 stockfish plays now an such a such a crazy and beautiful tactical sequence maybe just for fun if you like maybe if you want to practice any tactics uh, if you want to see maybe uh, deeper into this position if you want to really practice some immortal sequences try out maybe this position pause the video and try to see now really the optimal continuation here for white what would you do now in this particular position all of this sequence is not winning or something immediately uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure how many of us would even consider the next couple of moves here from White's perspective. Okay, take your time. Okay, here what was the first surprise of the game. Stockfish played now bishop takes e7. Giving up such a powerful piece for such a bad knight on e7 seemed to me like a strange idea. But this move does many, many things. The problem here for black uh, is that after bishop to e7, king takes e7 is actually not possible because you get this one, h takes g6, and then after something like f takes g6, then you get this one, knight to h4, then you have to play something like b5, but then we get the uh, here, you can maybe uh, pick up the knight, uh, the pawn on e5 with your knight, but then the bishop is coming, then you have to maybe play somewhere with the rook, and now in some sequences, knight to f5, we pick up this one, this one, I would say game over again here for black so that's why after bishop to e7 actually knight to e7 has to be played but now stoffish finds such a dirty dirty idea with this move knight to d6 very really wild stuff sacrificing now the knight but the issue is that you don't have any better moves you, you have to actually um accept this challenge if you play something like rook chop eight then this one is coming knight takes c8 rook, uh, king takes c8 rook from e to d1 uh putting more pressure against this one you're trying to cover then we pick up this one then we play e6 look at this very very dangerous you cannot uh, take of course because you lose the battle on the default you have to play something like d6 and then knight to e5 uh, look at this with some stuff like this knight to f7 knight to um and knight to d7 very, very messy position uh here for for black for sure so that's why after knight to d6 we have c takes d6 now stalker plays e takes d6 and whatever black does black has a tough time now to for the defender's position even if you play knight to c uh, knight to c6 here in the game knight to f5 was played but let's see now what happens if you play knight to c6 then white has a 
such a such a dirty tactical sequence with bishop to d5 so white is down uh, a piece but these pieces are not well placed this bishop is still stuck here uh, this of course the bishop is okay maybe attacking something but it doesn't have any support the knight is out of the game so really really cramped position here for black and now uh, maybe what black could try is here the move rook to f8 protecting this one but then you play a stunning bishop to f7 you sacrifice the other piece now after rook to f7 now this pawn is rolling you have to play something like king uh, rook to g7 but now a rook to e2 threatens the checkmate this pawn on d6 is such a such a great pawn one of the strongest pawns that i've seen in my life now you try of course to cover the bank rank and now white pushes the pawn further you're trying maybe to create some breathing spaces or something that are the only good moves maybe that you can play but now you sacrifice the rook just in order here to promote the queen and actually in this tactical sequence it would be even a stunning stunning checkmate so stalkers would basically sacrifice everything almost and uh, deliver a checkmate with the new promotion of the queen on g8 really really wild stuff so that's why here after e takes d6 uh minik tried knight to f5 stockfish takes uh, minik takes and now knight to e5 knight to e5 threatens now the checkmate on f7 immediately uh, if you don't react correctly so that's why here minik tried knight, uh, king to e8 but you're getting in front of the uh, rook of course and now knight to c6 good move now stockfish takes the bishop and from this point on white is having a much much better position but okay minik is battling now with a good plan i would say b5 and then after uh, stockfish rook to e7 uh, minik tried bishop to b7 which is really really uh, also nice attack uh, around the score g2 minik finally acted activated the pieces but again stockfish is not uh rushing here stockfish is saying here okay maybe you have something there around the square g2 but it's simply enough because i will simply pick up this one and now i have a dangerous passer on the default good choice here by the fish minik took stockfish uh, plays now rook to c7 very important move getting uh, the pieces out of the lies course because if the rook would have stayed here on d7 then the discovery and then we pick up the rook well, black would be up the exchange and would probably win the game so rook to c7 is not only getting the rook out of the lies course it's also liberating now the clear path uh potential path here uh, for white with the d pawn bishop to f3 king to h2 minik delivers a check you see also dangerous position here for white king to h3 rook to g5 and now stallfish attack simply the powerful bishop on f3 bishop to g2 if you play here bishop to h5 seems tempting also to pick up further pawns but actually it's not working because the bishop has to stay actually here where it's controlling the c6 square the knight can come here then to c6 and then if you step back with your rook then this pawn is marching and uh, the knight on c6 is also supporting uh, the potential promotion here <coughs> so <coughs> pardon me it's game over of course here for black so that's why for rook to d3 bishop to g2 uh here again stoffers plays king to h2 bishop to e4 staying on this diagonal as we mentioned and now rook to d4 what should you do if you try now rook to h5 to pick up the pawn seems tempting to create yourself a passer here it's simply not working because of this line uh you can deliver of course a couple of checks but then after king to e3 you're running out of good moves and then after rook to d8 you have this beautiful idea c4 uh where the c pawn will then be connected to the uh, to the d pawn and when white builds a very very advanced two pawns that are connected that are connected past pawns from an endgame's perspective this is of course unstoppable for black and the pawns will be already advanced on the fifth and sixth rank maybe then afterwards also the c pawn on the sixth rank uh bad bad position of course here for black so that's why for rook to d4 we have rook to d8 stockfish now attacks the rook uh, here rook to g2 king to h3 and now uh, minik has to basically give up now this bishop for um for the knight rook to c6 rook takes f2 uh we have here um an attack by the uh, by black uh, rook is of course now protecting the pawn and here mini created also passer on the f file but stockfish is saying this is my plan c4 the move that we have talked about previously and then connecting the c pawn again with c5 to the d pawn we have rook to f3 minik is battling takes out now here also the pawn on b3 but now c5 is actually completely completely winning endgame here for white but this game is also beautiful because it has a very nice 
motive how to win uh, these types of end games because many of us i would say uh, would mess even this position up from white's perspective although black has here i would say one passer it's of course uh, these are two pawns but this is only one pass pawn because uh, these are double pawns and although black has also two connected pass pawns on the queen side um actually this position is winning for white because as we mentioned before uh the pawns are too advanced um stockfish gave too much pressure already with the pawns and now it's simply a, um, a good technique here at the fish after a c5 we have rook to c3 minik is of course trying to go behind stockfish activates now the rook on c7 a5 c6 and now after move a4 d7 and now after move a3 rook to c8 king to e7 is a forced move and now rook to d5 good move by the fish the fish is trying not to deliver check and getting this rook out of this defense of the rook on d8 minik tried rook to c2 uh, rook king to f3 a couple of checks here by um by minik but it doesn't matter after move a2 here stockfish plays now the correct uh, rook to e5 whatever you do of course king to d6 is going to happen then i will simply pick up this one and we can then promote the, uh, the queen and here in the game king to f6 was played stockfish plays now the move rook to e1 which is very important not to take out the rook immediately because then um uh, then the the rook would be standing in the way of its own pawn first of all stockfish is securing here the potential promotion is saying no you're not going to promote here now after rook to c4 again uh black is running all of good moves and after king to d3 in this particular position uh minik resigned of course you can promote here or something but we'll simply pick it up and even if you get again the king here we'll simply deliver check pick up this one game over you can resign is also after a couple more moves so great great event gambit by the fish really incredible incredible stuff i really like this move knight to d6 it split open the position uh it split open the black's defense really incredible stuff and then going further with the king also uh the knight was very active controlling the c6 square stockfish even allowed some dangerous tactics uh, as we saw around the square g2 but stockfish calculated everything in a good way incredible incredible performance again by the strongest chess engine in the world so Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed it a lot. I hope that I cheered you up. Uh, uh, Monday is, of course, always tough to handle the starting week, uh, the starting work, working week. Uh, if you want to see more uh, beautiful AI chess games, and if you want to also be see beautiful AI chess games in the Evans Gambit, here are some links of our playlists. And if you like this content, hit the subscribe button. See you soon with some more videos. And what do we say in the end? Chess is the best, of course.